Hey, what's up? GW coming to you live once again. Hey, uh, I promised I'd tell you about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre now on Netflix, you know, premiered on the, uh, the 18th and I got up on the 19th, turned on Netflix before I went to work and I started watching just a couple of minutes of it just to see how it started, blah, 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 blah. Starts out promising, but falls flat. And I'm sure by now you guys have seen all over YouTube, all over, you know, IGN when you type this movie in. It's bad. There's a lot of reasons for that, and I'm not going to go into actors or actresses. I'm just going to go into main story aspects of this movie. And what a reimagining, I guess, should look like. You know, sort of illustrated. Okay, first of all, when <clears throat> if you guys go to watch that movie... They built the whole movie up on the hype that Sally Hardesty's character is coming back. Now, I want to make a point of fact here. A couple reviews ago when I talked about this. Her history with these movies, the character's history in the movies is touch and go at best. What I mean by that is you have the first one, right, done in 74. She's the only survivor. Okay? And she gets away via pickup truck. She jumps in the back of a pickup truck and ends up escaping the clutches of Leatherface. Okay. In Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 with Dennis Hopper, she is hardly mentioned after the opening credits. In fact, the opening credits of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 say that she sank into Catatonia, which means to me that she went crazy and basically became a mute and lived, you know, in fear of everything. Again, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, never mentioned. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, while I got you on it, while you got you guys watching, I have a problem with that film because they say Leatherface died in the gas chamber. That is clearly BS if you're going to make part 3. You know what I'm saying? But... Whatever. So the movies, yes, con con continuity don't matter. But in any event, this film was set on the return of Sally Hardesty to face down Leatherface. Seemed like a good idea on paper, and actually from a story point of view, it would probably be pretty cool. So what do we find Sally's character doing? Or... The character of Sally Hardesty. What do we find her doing? She is now a Texas State Police Officer. Texas Ranger. And that brings up one point. Okay. If this happened in 73 and she was the lone survivor. They did get one thing right by having her character or her. The character of. I keep wanting to say that. Because I don't know the girl's name who plays her. Because Marilyn Burns did pass away. So excuse me if I, you know, don't get everything exactly right here. So, here's the thing. If you spent your whole movie career, if Sally Hardesty became a Texas Ranger, don't you think her first priority would be to hunt and kill Leatherface? And... The Texas Chainsaw Massacre clan, you know, the Sawyer family, or the Hewitt family, or whatever the hell they're named in this movie, I don't really know. They didn't really say. But that's just one glaring error to me. There would be no movie if she hunted him down, or if she's going to hunt him down and kill him. Don't you think she would have actually earned that right, being the first lone survivor? You know, think about it. Now, I know what you guys are thinking right now. Jamie Lee Curtis did it better in Halloween, and she did, you know. But if you want to go toss up as to who's the first final girl, I'd have to say Marilyn Burns. So that's one thing. My second thing is, when Leatherface is introduced, he is a giant hulking man, which he kind of was in the first film. However, the 74 film. That's the way he was portrayed. And a mad butcher. However, if 
you go back to the 74 film, you had Leatherface, you had his brother, the Hitchhiker, and you had the cook, played by Jim Seedow. Very, very psychopathic role, and Jim Seedow was the perfect person to cast at. You had three, three men in that house. You did not have a woman. When this new quasi-sequel, I say that because it's in Legacy only, starts off, you had no hitchhiker, you had no, you had no cook, okay? What you did have is Leatherface's mother. So my first point of thought was, where did she come from? Why is she even in the movie when she was not in the 74 movie? And apparently she gave birth to him. Now I know this is set, you know, in the later sequels, the 2003 movie and the 2007 movie had her, had Leatherface's mother in there. But this is a direct jump from the 74 version to this. There was no mother. If anything, it should have been Jim Seedow's character as the cook, as his father, you know, who passed away and kicked off the, the revenge you know, that Leatherface went on. That's a second omission. From there, the film... It, it tries to pull things from all the other sequels that were ahead of it. And I know a lot of people didn't catch it, but... Like, for instance, at the end of the movie, in the climax of the film, where Leatherface and... I, I don't even know her name, but... You guys know who she is if you watch the movie. They're fighting in the old abandoned theater. And they both fall into the water. She comes out of the water. That was directly taken from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. The only difference is in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, the chainsaw that Leatherface had was in the water bobbling. And Leatherface was killed by it. I guess they wanted to sort of touch on the fact that, hey, we saw number three, let's just throw in a tribute video or a tribute, you know, action shot to it. There was no meat hooks in the movie. There was a lot of blood and guts in the movie, I'll tell you that. But there was no meat hooks. So when you think about it, there's no meat hooks in the movie, right? And if you watch the 74 version, what's the first thing that happens? Boom. Victim impaled on a meat hook. After Kurt gets killed. Second thing they downplayed in the movie. Is that in the 74 version. There was little hints of cannibalism. Spreading throughout the movie. In fact. In, in the actual introduction again. To Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. You heard that Sally Hardesty. His friends were hacked up and served for barbecue. This was further hinted on by the fact that the cook, again played by Jim Seedow, his name was Drayton Sawyer, won chili cook-offs because of the meat. So one has to wonder, was he butchering people and throwing them in the chili? I mean, you know, but they never hinted around that in this new remake. This remake was more like a Friday the 13th film. So there's that. 